Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome back to episode 25 of our Minecraft Survival Let's Play. Today, my folks, with being 25 episodes, here is the World Tour and Download. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Last time we came through here and built up this awesome new windmill with a granary and planted all of the wheat around here so we can actually grow that stuff up. Getting this one started right away here because I don't want to just be doing a tour around this place. I wanted to also do some building by finishing the interior of that building as well as the observatory. And maybe if we can, move a few villagers into that city. But that brings me to point number one, the world download. How does that happen? How's it going and everything in there? Well, in the past, I have released world downloads only to Twitch subs, YouTube members, as well as Patreon supporters to be able to protect my own work and everything like that. However, today I want to do something a little bit different. If you want to get your hands on it right away, go ahead and become one of those. Or if you are one, join the Discord and everything will be in there. Once you link your account, you'll get access to some cool channels where you can get all that super cool stuff and the download link. And yay, it's very nice. But if you would like to get your hands on the world download without that, well, my friends, today I've got a challenge here for everybody. If we can break over 20,000 likes on this episode which at the time of recording episode one is currently at 23,000 likes so if we get a similar level of hype to the episode one of this series I will release the world download public for everybody in the meantime though I've got a lot of grind work to do here and clear out a bunch of this space so we can start figuring out what we're gonna be doing on the interior of this building I wanted to turn it into a grocery store of sorts because I thought that'd be kind of fun to have the Fletchers as our grocers inside the area because I love the little hats that they have to be honest and I never even finished the roof of this building. Hmm, we'll get to that one here soon. I've been quite hard at work over on the store in here, and it's looking really cool so far. I've got a big old open square, right? Looks awesome, huh? It's great. So what we got over here is I decided to double layer the walls out, and we've got some smooth sandstone down there and a bunch of sand up here going all the way around. Unfortunately, running into an issue right back here is that that's the fireplace for the library, so we uh, can't really get rid of those blocks for now. And we've got this big old open floor. We've got polished diorite as well as polished blackstone down here underneath. And I've got a lot of stone left over for us that we can use. We've got access to the second floor. So I was thinking a way that we could hide this section is actually having access to our second floor. Hmm, where do we want to put a staircase in? Maybe we have a staircase going right here that's going to step ourselves up back into this point going all the way over to here that could be kind of cool my thought was on the second floor that we have up here you can see i double layered the windows as well with some smooth quartz and smooth quartz pillars we don't need to fill this entire floor with stuff so if we have the staircase coming up to here we could maybe have a little tiny hallway bringing it all the way out and then having some of these lines back here with some fake walls that make the area a little bit smaller than the downstairs section which is really I think okay with me now inside of here i wanted to build a grocery store as i mentioned and we're gonna have a bunch of fletcher villagers so i was thinking we could have some tables with some produce we're gonna have a bit of a let's see right back in here this section is probably going to be filled in of sorts with something some sort of closet for the staircase and all that good stuff so we can have produce over there we can have another section with some things over here we can use a lot of the fletcher tables as like countertops and just things around the point and then i was thinking along this back wall we could have a section for a bar or something like that and then of course a lot of shelving units along the walls just displaying a few different things and just having a lot of more decoration bits around here quick update here as i've got the inside set up for the most part now i've started gathering up a bunch of resources around here got our shelves in place got access up to the second floor ready to go right here i'm really loving the strip dark oak log as well as a dark oak ceiling with all of the sand going around the side i think it looks super nice and do i i do have an oak plank left let's go right there and then we got access up to here which i'm not even touching yet but the first of the flushing tables are in right over here and i really like how they match with the birch i forgot to bring any more with me though so i'll have to go grab some of that stuff and then this lovely guy right here i was thinking about shrinking into the one wide and out here on the edge we can add some soul sand stuff right in here and then we can put some nether wart on top of those, make it look like something's growing. And then I also brought some coarse dirt. And then we can surround these all with some trapdoors. Fletching table on the ends. Man, a full block right there. Then one of my favorite new details I found with 1.16 is using weeping vines. You can just put one right up there and it looks like a little hanging pepper or something like that. And I think they're so absolutely awesome. So I was thinking about using those as some details around here too. We'll have to put some string below them so they don't grow. 
Progress has been made. We have currently eight fletching tables down here, but I think I'm actually going to go ahead and remove that one and extend this table out to be a little bit further. So we'll have seven fletchers at most working in this area, but I'm super happy with that. Bro brought in a few looms as well and turned them around. I don't think villagers will be able to access those, so they can't get them as jobs. That might be an issue with this ladder here, so we can go ahead and remove that one. This back wall, I haven't decorated yet. I'm just leaving it as the stone for now. Then we've got this area over here, which is looking uh, super duper cool. Got all these little thingies growing up. Hopefully the villagers don't die on the sweet berries, but it's fine. They'll be okay, right? Right? I hope. But these soul campfires over here have been absolutely awesome because I've just been extinguishing them and making it look like we have a bunch of fish or some sort of food and produce sitting on top of them. I am out of potatoes, unfortunately, so I can't put any more on there. But then we've got a few item frames dotted around the area with a few other foods hanging out on them. And we got some sea pickles, of course. And there oh, we go. I think I'm going to throw one more item frame down here. Actually, you know what? Right on top of that one. We can do that there. And somebody's checking out a nice, fine piece of steak. Being floor one of the shop down here, we have a very active, very decorative where all of our Fletchers are going to be hanging out during the day. And I've been spending a little bit of time up here decorating out the second floor. And I haven't done much because I don't really know what to do up here. I think I'm just going to leave it right now with all of the beds. And if you have any ideas on what we can throw into this area to make it a little bit more uh, lifelike, be sure to let me know. We got seven beds up here because we have seven fletching tables down below. And I want to make sure every Fletcher has a place to sleep inside of the building. And I don't really know what else to do. I could throw a carpet in, but it just felt like throwing a carpet for the sake of throwing a carpet. And I needed to get a lot of beds up there. And mostly, I feel like what we're going to be looking at is down in this area when we're actually trading with the dudes. Next up for me, however, folks, is I've got to figure out what we're doing in this point. Yep. I got no ideas. To get started here, I think we just go with a bunch of pipes going around the area, doing a lot of that stuff, and use some acacia for some nice little re orangey red pipes too. Yeah, let's uh, do that. Not too sure about this one quite yet, but it's uh, about at the point where I think we're going to be leaving it today. I've... I'm okay with it. It looks like there's some sort of an invention-y thing going on in here, and I'm just finishing up these little sections right over there, stripping some logs down to make it look like we got a few more things going on. I've just been kind of adding flower pots and sea pickles and stuff around the area, make it look like I just got little gadgets and gizmos all over the place. So back here, we've got a little bit of a setup with something connecting into the furnace or the chimney that we had right over there. Got a tiny bit of a floor above it, and then right over here, some sort of a car that they're working on. I don't really know. Back here, I only figured we need two cartographers. I don't really know the big value out of them, so we'll only have two tables for now. Big old pipe going right throughout this area, breaking up everything. Uh, whatever this is, I don't know, activated redstones, pistons, things, uh, it does the stuff. Uh, and then there's a minecart moving around over there. We've got a little bit of a staircase to get up to this floor. We got the two beds down and an access point, which I guess that I probably should give ourselves an actual way to walk out of that door. So if any villagers want to walk out there, they can just go ahead and do that. And then, you know, now they can be out here in the front looking out over everything. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, up here is just going to be an exit point to get out to the outside viewing section where all of our villagers are probably going to fall off and die. Then they can come right back into here where there's nothing really going on quite yet. We'll get all that stuff filled out a little bit later on. Because for now, my friends, I'm going to throw all of our junk inside of this chest where it's going to be living for quite some time. And it is time to jump over to doing the world tour taking a look at everything we have done over the last what 24 episodes until now the creeper in the minecart seemed to have stalled out by hitting a cow on the railroad track which is unfortunate Unfortunately, we do not have an elytra quite yet, so we're going to be walking all over the place, but I figured we had to start up at our original starter home being Enderbutt's house this was something that was an absolute pain to get built up when we first started. Since we didn't have a way to walk up here, there was no easy way to get on top of this. But I was like, you know what? We've got a giant rock in this amplified world over here that stopped literally at this layer here, maybe a few blocks higher and add a tree on it. It's like we're chopping that down and we are building our first starter house, which we've moved everything out of at this point. As far as I am aware, there's not too much inside of the chest in here. We come up here every once in a while to do some crafting. This has kind of turned into my AFK spot. If I need to get some iron, because from here we can activate everything over in the industrial area, we can also activate the iron farm, which is right out there, which will get a structure built around soon. And it just kind of activates everything within the base, which is awesome, except the slime farm. But that thing, if we're AFK there for 10 minutes, it gives more, more than I'll probably ever need. A big rule that I set behind this world over here is that we can only sleep and skip the nighttime if we have one of our established beds. We had to unfortunately move the bed out of our house, which when Enderbutt moved up, 
in there because uh, he blocks us our ability to sleep. So we're now sleeping in the basement where we had built out these few little crop farms that kept us running for quite some time with between all of that stuff. It was really awesome and really nice to have. Then we moved over here a little while ago and built up this little goals board and rules board for everything that we're allowed to do and have can do, have been able to do and everything like that. And I think we've been able to do a few of them. Interiors, we kind of tackled that today. I wanted to make a bunch of rickety pathways going all over the place and really using the amplified terrain and making it feel like we're still in the jungle instead of taking the jungle away from us. So we built up these cool little animal farms. So we got sheep and we've got cows right over there. Getting the sheep and cows up into this area was the most difficult thing I've had to do in a long time time eventually after that we came out here and built up our first airship of the place which actually houses our enchanting table all right down in there diving right into the steampunky aesthetics i've wanted to create some windmills inside of our animal farms it's a sort of like a water cistern so that we could make sense about how they're drinking but a more recent area that we've worked on and well not this structure right here this was something we built on a stream a while back and i thought it turned out really cool it was with granite dirt blocks grass blocks and uh, blackstone as well as coarse dirt to create some sort of a water mill just in the backdrop that really doesn't appear too much but you know it's there and we've got our first water wheel right over there with the water source flowing all the way down the mountain i thought was absolutely awesome to have then more recently well in last episode we came over here built up this farming area with a grain silo and a big old windmill out there with actually two windmill blades attached to it got a big old wheat field now so if we need to do any cow breeding we actually have the wheat to be able to supply that. Not going in any specific orders on how we're looking through everything, but let me know in the comments below what your favorite build was and what your favorite moment so far of this Amplified Survival Let's Play has been. I would love to hear all the positive things that you've thought about the series so far. I've had so much fun working on this one, but headed over to our villager breeder, which is uh, make sure creepers not coming across, is right in there. These guys have supplied many a villager for us which are currently housed down in this cave and i haven't done too much with them after getting a few uh, librarian villagers so we've still got a lot of them just chilling in there doing their own thing we'll get that sorted out here soon after we got those interiors prepped in the city today that really means that we can actually start you know sending a few more villagers up there and these guys forever will live down here and if we have any unfortunate zombie incidents again we can uh, use those in order to deal with it. Now, a much more recent project has been the city itself. I love this front entrance gateway that we have up here coming up into the city where we have obser our observatory that we built recently. And then we also have inside of here, our library and more so over here, our grocery store, which we're just gonna have all the Fletchers. We touched on those guys in today's episode already. So we don't really need to do that again. The library is fully done on the interior, doing that down here. We've got a second floor with like a lounge area up here. And then that carries on to a third floor actually, where we can go through the door in here and we've got a few librarian villagers selling looting we've got our mending book and we've got this dude over here with protection four a big goal for me so far on the series has been to not rush things just to enjoy the slow minecraft grind of building up a world around us and having a lot of fun and doing what i want to do at the time instead of worrying about oh my gosh is this going to progress us farther into the world as you all know we don't have an elytra and we've been working on this thing for quite a while and all that stuff and we're going up and down and up and down and all over the place and i'm still okay with that i'm not feeling the urge or the rush to get there we'll, we'll do it in the next few weeks most likely but i've been really enjoying working on this world down here however we started building out a fishing docks area which has this structure right here which was our adventurers guild it has a full interior for it as well and is actually turned into the bedroom that i use most often thanks brown couch over here i really appreciate you being here then we've got this guy which i actually need to update the map for because i haven't done that for a while can we come all the way back here into our secret room getting that guy updated updating the whole city put him back in here but this was meant to be a little bit of an adventurer's hangout area and then more importantly back here it houses where we are storing all of our deaths we had our first death by falling second death was by a creeper third death was by a creeper Fourth death was by falling while trying to escape a skeleton. I think it'd be really cool to look down this eventually and just see layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of hopefully not us dying at all. No, never again. We're not going to die at all in this world. It's totally fine. But the next thing that we built down in this area, I believe, was actually this potion brewery area over here, which I 
love it. It's so cool. It's not super functional on the inside. Besides, we have three brewing stands set up here, a bunch of big decorative brewing vats back over here as well. And we got a little minecart with a chest moving around. He's doing his job. Look at him. Look at him. He's so good. He goes back and forth all day long. A big old crane wheel, something or another over here in this tiny little cove that it has that I love to death. I'm going to come back in here and clean up these vines here in a little while. The next structure down here, however, is our storage room, a big old warehouse on the docks where it's got everything that we could possibly need a lot of these chests are full of a bunch of junk like we got so much stone over here and our little mini super smelter furnacey thing which is used for smelting a lot of glass right now over here we've got our first pandas that we brought home very much inspired by kung fu panda i gave them a little restaurant that they can run down here on the dock unfortunately we don't have noodles in the game and he is oh so grumpy and oh so adorable hey how you doing buddy and we got some parrots around here too Everything I do in this world is meant to be connected, interconnected in some way of working together, which I've thought has been a really cool way of doing things. So speaking of which, we got to dive on into the boat where we've got Polar Boat right over there who no longer wants to let us inside the boat. We built this giant structure over here at some point or another, just has some way to expand the city and give ourselves a larger footprint that we can build on top of, which is absolutely awesome. Wilson is chilling out here in the water doing his thing. He's uh, forever staring at the future sunrise. There is an iron farm over the water there, which I've mentioned previously, and that thing eventually is going to be turned into some form of an oil rig out in this area. Looking forward to that one a lot, but here is the view of the entire base so far, and it is so awesome looking. I absolutely love this thing. Coming over here, however, this big old pipe coming out of the ground is actually a triple slime chunk down there below. So we've dug out a lot of that section. We actually have two or three more layers to dig out, I believe, to max it out. But you can see slimes will be coming out of this thing like crazy. It is just constantly dropping slimes out of here if we're in the area. And it is so funny to watch. We've just got a pit here full of campfires that they unfortunately just kind of fall into. And uh, we collect all the drops down there. It's great. This building, however, is a sugarcane farm for ourselves, which is very, very cool. We run this thing quite often just to be able to get a bunch of paper to trade with our librarian villagers. We've got a nice little setup for a spot in here with we just kind of decorate out the interior to make it look like a warehouse factory of some sort of somehow this stuff is over here with a furnace. It gets cooked down. The paper gets stretched out or something like that, smashed into a roll of paper. And these ones are ready to go and moving off from all of the sugarcane that we have. Thought that was a kind of fun way to do it. And then up here, we needed an experience farm and we went mining one day on stream and this railroad takes us all the way to a triple spawner that we found that has been so very helpful in this world out the other side of the tunnel i thought it'd be more fun to have ourselves going up above ground so we built this railroad system a little bit like wild west inspired railroad bridge right there to bring us all the way down and we go right back into a tunnel all the way down here where eventually we will be stopped at this nice little spruce log over here where we stop. We can jump on out. Please don't leave me minecart and fall on all the way down here. We've got this is going to be filling up with zombies if we stand over here because there's a zombie spawner right behind that wall. And then we have a double spider spawner, one right behind that wall and one right over here. So if we stand right in here, we're going to be getting regular spiders as well as cave spiders. And I actually need to bring some string back with me. For the zombie spawner over here, we've got some barrels down there to collect all of the drops from them. And you can see all the spiders building up over there. We've got a bunch of levels right now, so we're all good to go. I want to make it look almost like a little bit of a factory or workshop room of sorts that we have. Thought it was really cool to just decorate out a touch since we're down there so often. I went back in, slept the night away, and could not resist turning some shader sun and watch the morning sun come up over this place. Hey, Squiddy Boy, how you doing? Ooh, free ink? Thanks, that's so kind of you. Look at this place though. I love the telescope on the observatory. Can't wait to get an elytra actually see it from above instead of just below like this. But wow, over 25 episodes. I know we've been saying we've been moving slow, but we have done so much stuff around here. And this isn't even just it, folks. We have two other bases we have been working on. So let's jump into the nether and fly over to those. But first, underwater terraforming job look how cool it is oh i love this down here trying to go with like a dead coral reef area as if the water is pretty polluted from all of the steampunkiness happening around the place and the infrastructure inside of the nether we have done next to nothing besides setting up a few portals and some really really rickety pathways and i guess a blaze farm too which has been very nice to have but this has mostly just been for gathering up a bunch of blackstone 
and head enough following the torchy pathways we can get to our next places and here we are back in the overworld at our flower forest village that we built up a while ago and has turned recently more so into a uh, bee breeding area so we can fill the entire world full of bees and i'm so very happy about that but over here i decided to come over here and build like a yurt type thing which i thought was really cool then expanded that out to having a bunch of areas where we can get a lot of dye. The idea of this place was that I wanted to start having colors back in the city. And one thing that I want to do in this world is making sure everything links back up into the city in some way, shape, or form. So there's a boat that'll come out here that we can go check out in a moment. That'll pick up all of the dyes, drop off whatever supplies this place needs, and then take all of the goods back off to the city for ourselves. But over here, all these little huts that you can see have the two tall flowers inside of them. And if we were to come over this way, hit that guy, it would start if there was actually a bone meal inside of this thing is that would start breeding up this flower, setting all of the dye down this way to where we have an extra house right here with all of the oak and all of that stuff. If we see it right down here, you can see a few of the flowers being gathered up. That's why I'm getting all of the two tall flowers for dye. And then we have a one tall flower farm right up in this place that uh, I forgot got blown up by a creeper. Yep, I came here on a stream and opened the door and there's a creeper right there and he blew up on me. Unfortunately, the front of the house got destroyed, but we've still got all of our seeds and dyes and everything down in here, which is pretty great. And you can see a bit about the farm right in there. It's just a slime block flying machine with a bunch of bone meal that gets dispensed up. And then the flying machine will destroy everything going across and picking them all up. Up this way, however, we have windmill number one that we built quite a while ago, going with the same style as everything down here. I know I've been having so much fun experimenting with new blocks, like using light gray concrete powder, acacia wood, stripped acacia wood, and then all of these things to create a small turbine of sorts over here. It's been so fun using the steampunk aesthetic to make new builds. There's just a lot of things that I've never tried before that finally in this series, I feel like I've been able to try and learn a lot of new things and just have so much fun with building again. So we've got this awesome windmill blade over here that I've used quite a few times before. And it looks like we actually got a boat out there that we can uh, jump on down to. And again, this island is awesome. We've got to come do some terraforming around this front face so that it doesn't look quite so gross. But we've got the boat I was talking about that transports goods back and forth between the city and the flower forest island right over here that I love. It's a bit of a design off of like a steamboat with a turbine behind it of sorts so we have a bunch of wheels that would actually be turning and spinning and big paddles they'll move the boat forward instead of having sails again just a unique way to make a boat that i haven't tried before and so it looks really awesome and up here we can see all of the different things going on a little bit of a loudspeaker up there some crates of dyes and things headed back to the city which is right off in that direction some more things around here and just a nice little place to hang out for the captain if i ever need to have a place to sleep I can stop by right there and sleep for the night. One of our bees has decided to leave the island in search of a brand new flower that he's never seen before, even though every flower he could ever want is on this island right here. What are you doing, bud? Okay, goodbye. Good luck on your journey, my friend. Good luck on your journey. Back in the nether, we can jump over to the next project, which has been a largely stream-only project as of late because it's, uh, it's a pretty big mega project. We are transforming a guardian temple. Now, I know I'm not touching on every little detail and everything around you. If you'd like to go check those out, the playlist for this series will be in the description and all that stuff. You want to see them more in detail, would recommend watching the videos themselves. Just kind of a quick tour and recap of everything we have done so far. This guy here, however, might be a little new to everybody. If you've not watched the streams at all, you can see all of our supplies in here for being able to clear this thing out. And it has been a slow process, but it's been really fun. It's been really, really nice to be able to just have some giant Minecraft project to grind away on. So we're currently working on clearing everything out, all of the water, getting rid of all of it. So you can see this entire area in here is dry. We're working on those sections right over there. We have a cursed double tall seagrass down there, which is pretty cool. And after that, we're going to be turning this into a large drilling area of extracting prismarine out of the world and also some way, shape or form incorporating a farm for these lovely little guardian dudes right there that seem to really like me taking this place over mm -hmm. they're big fans they're big fans of me but as you can see we are almost halfway done that is ah, it's been a long project it's been a big build 
But I'm really happy to say that we almost can start getting to the building point instead of just the clearing the land point. Back in the city now with our first Wither Skeleton Skull. We need two more of those guys before we can gather a beacon and tackle the Wither Boss and all of that good stuff. But oh my gosh, this series has been so absolutely fun so far. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Please be sure to click that like button down below if you did, my friends. Remember, 20,000 likes and I will release a public world download for this. These videos have been getting well over 100,000 views, so I'm only asking one in five people to actually do that if you would all like to get your hands on the download. So there you go, my friends. But that is going to have to do it for today's episode. I've got to get back to the grind and get some work going so we can keep on moving forwards with working on a bunch of things around this area. I'm so excited to keep expanding everything that we've been doing around these points so far. It's been so absolutely fun to work on this build. Amplified is something else. I had never really ex knew what to expect going into this type of stuff, but it has been an absolutely awesome journey. So with that, my friends, please be sure to click that subscribe button if you're brand new. Click that like button as well if you have not already. But my friends, I will catch you on the flip side.